Good morning, good morning. And we just put his foot in it again. Asked the woman who's in the paper shop if she had a good Mother's Day. To which she replied, I haven't got any children and I haven't got a mum. Great. Anyway, how are you? Another sunny day in paradise. It is sunny actually, it's been nice over the weekend. Took Mrs. Angry over to see the two Miss Angries over the weekend. So uh, everyone's had a good time. The, uh, those of you that watched, uh, I mean, what's the, what's the, what's the general chit chat at the moment? What's going on, Angry? I said, what's, what's, you know, in hundred years time? I said, I'm watching this in the future. What was going on? You know, <clears throat> had the Kaiser declared war by then. The big stories are, comic relief was a complete disaster. This is the Chatterati. All of this, <clears throat> all of this has got dental links. So don't, so if you think, oh, I'm not gonna listen to the old angry windbag go off on one for half an hour, then don't worry because this is all part of the big dental model. So basically, Comic Relief got crucified. This is a charity that raised 71 million pounds as, and they got nothing but criticism for doing it, you know, <clears throat> in the, the M what is now called the MSM, mainstream media. And uh, <clears throat> people were like, oh, you've got to watch this sketch, it was so cringy, or you've got to watch this sketch, it was so cringy. And so there's a thing called the Streisand effect, uh, named after Barbara Streisand. And uh, this was at the time when Google was going around in a plane photographing planet and uh, they photographed her beachfront property so she uh, said that uh, she wanted this sort of overhead photograph of her property removed and they said no they wouldn't do it so she then threatened to sue them and so this went this is all over the internet oh if you look here this is but this is where Barbara Streisand lives. <laughs> this is this is the photo of her property that she wants removed. So thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people probably saw this. And uh, at the time of the lawsuit, it emerged that at the time that she decided to you know take action, something like only seven people had seen this, of which three of them were her and her lawyer, and uh, a lawyer's clerk or something. So. Uh, this is why it's called the Streisand effect, and basically it means being so unwatchable that people have to watch it, or making such a fuss about something that uh, you don't want seen that more people would see it than if you just shut up. So I'm I'm tuning in to watch this Red Nose Day, which I wouldn't normally watch because apparently it's you got to see it. It's the biggest disaster ever, and actually I thought it was okay. I mean, I didn't. I'm not saying it was totally okay. What, by what I mean was, I thought it was okay. Was I meant that it's it's no more cringeworthy than it normally is. It lived down to its its high standard for disaster. Not any especially worse. So I think they had a terrible audience, <clears throat> and I think that again, it's you know. How, how are you going to link this into dentistry, Angry? How are you going to link it? Well, the link is corporatism, okay? The link is corporatism. And the sort of the mind-numbingly bad effect on the market that corporatism... The Comic Relief used to all be about people sitting in bars of baked beans and the crowd used to be, um, you know, small family sort of fundraisers. Oh, by the way, I've turned off... I've put this phone on airplane mode. Apparently... It's very uh, sort of touch and go as to whether my lips sync with my uh, my image. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So I've managed to, you know, having gone through all the possible combinations, is it the coder, the decoder, the video editing software that I'm using, the computer I'm using it on, the, the link, is it getting corrupted, reading it onto the computer, etc. I've finally narrowed it down to the phone. 
the phone sometimes just doesn't synchronize so but sometimes it does which means that it's, it's not inherently a problem it's it's a problem under certain circumstances so now we're trying to find out what circumstances what the circumstances those are and it's most likely to be if it's processing in the background isn't it if it's doing something like hunting for a phone signal or taking a mex a message or a signal or a whoa, whoa signal I'm a signal user Amber Rudd doesn't like me I'm gonna come on to Amber Rudd who's Amber Rudd she's the Home Secretary you ignoramus did you not know that the Home Secretary was Amber Rudd nor did I anyway where was I Yeah, comic relief and corporatism. So, so you know, you get <clears throat> when you watch Scott of Comic Relief on fast forward, as I do, you sort of quickly get the idea of you know it's like a it's a it's a funny sketch, it's a, something to make you cry, and then it's a corporate advert. And I was brought up in the days when you know they used to put stickers over the pots of jam in Coronation Street because they didn't want anyone to know that they were eating Robertson's Golden Shred and yet everyone knew that's what it was but they just couldn't have the brand you know and they used to cover up when they used to go in the corner shop they had all the packets turned around the funny way so you couldn't read what was so oh they went to ridiculous uh, lengths I don't know how, is it? I don't know if that was the BBC well, anyway, if it wasn't uh, Coronation Street, then it was definitely Crossroads or EastEnders. Oh, please. So, um, yeah, so no advertising on the BBC. And then they sort of said, oh, well, it's all right. If it's in context, you know, if it's, it's like smoking. No smoking on the telly, no smoking on the stage, unless the play calls for it unless you know there's a point to it you can say yeah it's necessary in this scene for this person to be smoking in that case you know we're going to put political correctness in the bin temporarily so but now now apparently if you're Sainsbury's or if you're British Telecom you can get an ad a big advert on the BBC in prime time in, in front of their one of their biggest audiences of the year and link your brand to saving starving children in Africa you know really really build up big up your brand values and in, so instead of sort of spending five or ten million pounds advertising on ITV or spending five or ten million pounds trying to sneak your brand onto the BBC you just got to give them five or ten million pounds and they'll put your brand on and not only put your brand on but let you have like a three minute slot where you can photograph all your stuff smiling and singing and dancing and coming in and out of your premises or queuing around the block or whatever uh, and which is you know I mean that sort of exposure and that sort of uh, positive uh, identification for the brand on the BBC in prime time like that is for them you know three million pounds is chump change and the funniest thing is, it's not even their freaking three million. They've collected it. They've collected it <laughs> off the mug punters who also pay the license fee to pay the BBC to put this thing on. You're paying. You're paying to pay. You're paying to see yourself pay. <laughs> um, and it's all the big players, you know, what the big, big, big institutional, but those are the blue chip institutional players. Your British Airways, your British Telecom, your Sainsbury's, your massive, massive supermarket. And uh, what are these, you know, what uh, feedback has there been about the fact that, well, what, what happens, of course, when you're a big corporate sponsor like that, and they hold the event at the O2, they say, look, you know, in consideration of your £4 million donation or something, you can send along a thousand of your staff. And so these poor old staff on zero hours contract who really should be having a pay rise are told, uh, no, we're not going to put your pay up this year, but um, we have organised a few buses uh, to take you to the O2 so you can be in the audience for Red Nose Night, you know, providing you, you buy a red nose and just put a bit of money in the bucket on the bus. <laughs> so, 
you get an audience that basically is not your average charity fundraising audience. It's a corporate audience, you know, and corporate audiences are the worst. They just, they either go there and they're just bewildered or they go there and they just want to bunk off, you know, and sort of see if they can get, get off and if there's a pub near the O2 that they can have a drink in and then sort of suddenly reappear f uh, at the bus at the end. So of course the whole bloody comedy thing went flat because the audience was flat. And the corporates, in response to the criticism of the thing, have done nothing, which is what they do. I mean, if, uh, if the establishment gets criticised, then they shut down, basically. They just ignore. Ignore is the best word for it. They just ignore everything. They ignore uh, criticism. This is comes from Buckingham Palace, basically. Never explain, never complain is their uh, motto. It's in Latin, of course, but that's what it is. And... Uh, so there's been no um, analysis or I suppose they're in meetings saying, you know, do we really want our brand to be associated with this rubbish? But uh, when you look at the, the format, you know, I mean, it's a very, very dated format now and you can understand why it's increasingly getting rejected. If you look at the um, uh, crowdfunded appeal for the PC who was knifed defending the House of Commons, uh, that's up to 750,000 and that's in a few days so that's like I know it's only one percent of what the BBC raised but it was raised with with what with nothing with one web page one web page how much did the BBC cost us you know the BBC could afford to put 71 million pounds in in the charity and save us from this night this disastrous night of Vic Reeves flashing a bloody uh, sausage pretending it's his penis, uh, hoping that we're going to find that funny. So, Amber Rudd, right? So that's, and corporatism is in dentistry, you've got the same thing. You've got, you have got the sort of the uh, freezing out of anyone who criticizes in dentistry. That's why the whole thing is not, not never really pretended to be a meritocracy, but it, at least it was, uh, there was an element of pluralism in it, in that the Department of Health did used to listen to all points of view. And then, you know, under the CDO Cockroft, even that ceased. And basically anyone who criticised it, you know, he had this sort of uh, autocratic rule where anyone criticised him was increasingly not invited to anything, not invited to, uh, to uh, the cricket matches, not invited to the theatre visits, not invited to the one-on-one, -on -one media briefings in advance of anyone else finding anything out um, and increasingly only invited to the sort of general press conferences which the department held one at once every three months because that was the absolute least they could do you know short of saying that they know they're going to exclude the press altogether they had to have an open press meeting but then um, and then what they did at these press meetings was they just started reading out their press releases which you'd had anyway and he's Barry used to sit there and just literally read out the press releases and you think well we know all this you know you used to ask him a question and he would never answer he was very good at the not answering questions Barry he was like um, he knew that uh, if you asked a question once he could sort of uh, pretend that he slightly misunderstood the question and give you like an answer to a different question and then you'd get one comeback and, you'd, and basically your comeback was always the same. It was like, I'm sorry Barry, I don't know if you misunderstood what I was asking. You haven't answered my question, which is... And he would then give you another answer, which was again totally unsatisfactory or, or not detailed enough or again was misunderstood. And uh, you couldn't then, uh, after that, come back... Well, if you did, you know, everyone used to go, oh God, you know... Oh. Uh, and say, look, I'm sorry, I think you're deliberately not answering this, you know, I, I want an answer. This was our only chance to get an answer from him, you know, you couldn't ring him up or email him and ask him for something. You, this is your only chance to sort of pin him down on some of these things and uh, and uh, he knew basically enough to be able to slip out of any sort of, uh, re you know, any, any line of questioning. So Amber Rudd is the Home Secretary apparently. And she's decided that because the uh, uh, parliamentary, uh, the, the guy who's attacking the House, 
Parliament use WhatsApp that the security services have got to get into WhatsApp and every sort of uh, secure messaging service. So she's first of all, she's like well behind the the curve on this. This debate has been going on in America for the last two or three years. Um, and because because she's asking the impossible. And like most most idiots don't understand that they're asking the impossible. They ask it because she's like, I'm the Home Secretary, I can ask for anything I like. <laughs> so or in America, they, you know, they said to Apple, when Tim Cook said he wouldn't decode an iPhone, they said, you're Apple, you control the software. You can, you can put a back door in the software for us. If you can't, who can? So because you can, you must. And then it, they sort of it all got skipped around because it turned out they got into the iPhone. Everyone's saying to them, well, what are you going to Apple for? We can get you into an iPhone, you know. So they went to some Israeli security company who showed them how to hack an iPhone. Like the FBI didn't know how to hack an iPhone. And now she's saying, oh yeah, no, we don't, we don't want any of this end-to-end -end encryption because we can, we can get your phone, but now we can't find out, uh, you know, what you said. And um, it just, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. It's, you know, the companies, the companies, knowing, have anticipated this. They know, they knew this was coming. Rudd, Rudd is about the second or third wave of this sort of attack, and uh, they always, she, they always say the same thing. You know, we can't have, uh, in the same way as President Obama said, uh, we can't have everyone walking around with a Swiss bank account in their pocket because he didn't understand Bitcoin. And now we've got Amber Rudd saying we can't have anyone with access to private communications because they're all walking around with WhatsApp and Signal in their pocket. So, um, even, let's just say, I mean, what WhatsApp, what they've done and what Signal has done, but certainly Signal to more extent than WhatsApp, they've designed the system in a way that they never see the unencrypted message, what they call the clear text. So, so they, and they've done this deliberately, so that when the government comes calling, which they knew they would, to say, uh, can we please have this in a decrypted format? They say, I'm sorry, you don't understand. That's not the way the system works. We don't have that. We never have that. It's encrypted on the user's phone using a key that doesn't leave the user's phone and transmitted, encrypted through our system via our servers, still encrypted and arrives on the recipient's phone encrypted and is decrypted with a key that remains on their phone that we don't have. So short of finding out who the message was sent to and asking them to give you the t clear text, there's nothing we can do. And uh, and that's it, you know, end of story. And if she does, in, uh, if she does succeed in uh, asking everybody to uh, use, uh, you know, what will happen is uh, perhaps a bunch of people will use something that is, uh, you know, does have a back door in it uh, to the secret services and the Israeli secret services and Russian hackers and uh, Silicon Valley and, you know, Uncle Tob Cobbley and all, then um, then we I won't use it. No, <laughs> nobody who wants end-to-end -end encryption will use it. And certainly nobody who's a terrorist will use it. And so where will you be? Rudd, Ruddite, Mrs. Ruddite. Actually, I'm going to trademark that. She's a Ruddite. Okay, I'm at work. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.